Morning Baker Economics and Social Issues students. It is our uh, last week here. It is Sunday, July 30th. Can't believe that July is almost done, but um, everybody's been doing a great job, so just keep it up. Uh, looking forward to reading your final forum discussion post and uh, get you wrapped up. But uh, again, uh, make sure everything is submitted by Sunday before midnight. I'm going to try to get those grades posted by Monday, most likely, uh, when our course ends. So, but um, with this week, uh, you're going to look at chapters 33 that looks at discrimination in terms of um, what we call sex, race, or ethnicity. What I want you to note in this chapter, especially in next, next chapter, is economists will use a lot of statistics um, to look at differences um, between pay, what we call income, uh, opportunities, and in statistics, you try to measure something to see if there's a statistical difference. Then you, you've taken the statistics course, we look at the probability of this event happening. And this is where we get into like p-values and those types of things that say, hey, there's definitely a difference that exists in, say, the mean income for this group or uh, the prices of this particular group, say, men to women. Or if you were looking at, say, the... Uh, if there was a police force in Kansas City and we were to look at the percentage of, let's say, the 90% of the officers are men, but 10% of the officers are women, and if we saw it be twice as likely that a man was promoted than a woman, uh, we would say, hey, there's there's a statistical difference here. So you know, you're going to hear a lot about that, but just know that economists like to use statistics quite a bit. And the, the textbook uses like regression to try to predict an outcome, you know, what we call simple linear regression. That we, you just put in one variable to predict an outcome, but multiple linear regressions, they use many variables to say, hey, this is what the outcome predicted. So... Um, with that, you know, there's some interesting things when I was reflecting on these chapters. Well, one, you may have or may not heard of this, called the pink tax, where they would actually uh, say it was a kid's toy uh, or a, a lady's razor versus a men's razor. And if one razor was blue and the other one was pink, they were actually charging a higher price on the pink razor, even though uh, from a physical standpoint, it was the exact same razor. Or you may have had, had heard stories about how women statistically were charged higher prices on cars when they walked into a car shop uh, or if they were like service repairs. So the textbook gets into a little bit of these examples. Uh, I always kind of enjoyed, um, if you ever get an opportunity to read Freakonomics or watch the, the movie Freakonomics, it's kind of getting a little bit dated now, but it's basically an economist and a, a journalist out of uh, Chicago that look at these kind of somewhat, you know, a lot of these topics that we talk about in economics are are controversial. You know, we it's a it's a problem. We kind of try to find solutions. What is this right solution? But uh, nevertheless, they, they did things such as studies as like what's in a name, and um, there's been other studies that done where they've sent out resumes uh, with the same qualifications but uh, with different names and response rate uh, with one name that would be say more traditional American. Uh, would get a higher response rate. So, uh, needless to say, it is interesting. So, but when I think of uh, discrimination from um, what other courses in the past, or you know, when reading some of my graduate school a long time ago, uh, basically I remember from Colander's book, it was that there can be discrimination on um, sometimes on an individual level. And what I mean by this is like if if I if you wanted to hire a server. Uh, in a restaurant, you would probably not hire somebody that has a bad personality or a sour personality. You, you wouldn't go want to go up to the restaurant and somebody is greeting you and they, they would say something like, what do you want? <laughs> that, that person would probably not be around. They would say, they'd say, Joe, you have to approach the people in a more friendly manner and make, they, make them feel that they're valued, if they, they feel like they're rude to you. So that's what I mean by individual type. Some by, by group uh, might be, you know, if you looked at teenage workers, I remember when I was a teenager, uh, a lot of the teenage workers, you know, around me, it was a hard time getting them to show up to work. I, I was a pretty diligent worker. I was, uh, I started off as like what call professional dish consultant. I, I washed dishes. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I always show up to work at time, you know, I'd always do my job, but, um, you know, the other kids would not show up and eventually they'd be fired. So, you know, like you look at that as a, as a group, uh, maybe teenagers were not as reliable. We can measure those. The last, which is illegal, is, is the things that we're talking about in this chapter, is by discrimination by 
um, race, uh, sex, religion, etc. Something that should not impact at all uh, the decisions of performance of a job. And that's where the economists even kind of interestingly looked at and Gary Becker, who won a Nobel Prize, I think I mentioned already uh, with um, studies on legal goods. But in that sense, you know, the idea was that if, if one labor was cheap and people are smart and they're trying to make money, then they should just hire the uh, the one that's a cheaper group if they're qualified. And uh, then, you know, those wages would level out. But they didn't. And that's why there's a lot of policies in place these days to try to correct that. So, uh, okay. So the last chapter, chapter 34, I think you're going to find this very interesting with uh, the income and wealth gaps in the, um, the United States. But when we look in terms of um, income, um, a lot of how economists look at it is they usually break this as like populations. You know, if there were, say, 100 people in our class and if I could break up into 20, 20, 20, 20, and 20 people, and I can measure like, oh, here's all the, the ones in the lowest income and here's ones on the highest income, um, we, we definitely see differences. Um, and, and what we've seen is that that income gap uh, among individuals in our economy uh, continually grows. You know, there, there's, you know, the incomes of, say, the, the top 20 percentile uh, control a lot of the income. If you looked at 20 percent of the population controls a lot of the income, and maybe the bottom 20 percent of people in the United States uh, barely have any income. So, you know, they, the textbook kind of leads the question, well, what causes these gaps? So there, are, there are obviously some economic reasons, but there are other reasons, too. And then when you get to the, the question of wealth, which we call like net worth, uh, which you think of it just simply as assets minus liabilities. And uh, at my age in particular, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had about 10 more years until retirement, but uh, I'm always kind of like uh, benchmarking or comparing myself to where, where do I need to be? You know, like general rules of thumbs, they, they say like my age uh, 50, you should have like six times uh, what you make in your income if you want to maintain that same lifestyle. And, and a lot of Americans don't save anywhere near what they should be doing um, if they really want to maintain that same lifestyle into income. Uh, we tend to have a positive time preference for money and don't save much. That's another separate uh, issue uh, in economics. But, you know, there's a certain policies trying to change that to get people to save more or more for savings. So uh, that's a lot of behavioral economics that you'll, you'll, you'll have to ask people, say, in a retirement plan, you know, they just do it for you at work. You're going to contribute 5% and only if you opt out of it, you don't have to contribute the 5%. So once people are enrolled in it and it's just automatic thing, they, they generally stick with it. So nevertheless, uh, there's going to be questions addressed about how we correct these gaps. Um, what can be corrected? What's the right tax policy? What's the right distribution? Um, what's the right programs? So there, there's a plethora of uh, different um, solutions and issues, but I, I do think that you'll find it very interested in the reading. So anyway, I'm looking forward to your uh, your final forum post weeks. If you have any questions, do reach out to me. Uh, but other than that, uh, I want you to enjoy the rest of the summer if the course is over. I'll post one last announcement as we get towards the end of the course, usually just say, hey, we're wrapping up the day. But other than that, uh, I'll look forward to talking online. Have a great week.